Hello. All right. Sorry. Um, fairly good day. Uh, my mom went among white people yesterday, and I'm she's feeling tired and sleep and everything. And I'm saying to her, I said candidly, completely candidly, mom. Um, you know what? That the only way to stay not sick, to not have nightmares and sleepless nights and things like that. I said, stay away from white people. And she said, I can't be like you. I'm becoming more like you every day. And it's like, look, I'm just telling you the way it is. We look at life and we suspend disbelief and we deal. I said, mom, we're filling out a form today or something. Like, and it asked like, you know, what are your friends' names? She said, I don't have any friends. Mom, when you need to, you tell me you have no friends. And then you tell me you're going to see your friends. So obviously you don't really think they're completely your friends. And it's fine. I realize that. That's most of my relationship with white people. But every now and then it's nice between friends to basically admit that none of our friends are our friends. Just to get, get, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I know that. And I said, you probably know everything I've ever told you, but what happens is, you know, that doesn't always protect someone. You get addicted to people more likely if you're, if you're not their friend. And she says, well, I like to do service. And I've said the same thing on my channel. It's like, people do service to other white people because that's the only way to be friends with them, is to give them shit for free. My mom has my mom has worked for people. She's cleaned places. She's cleaned up their crap. She's helped them get old. She's helped them die. She's cleaned their houses. She's cleaned their potties. And you know everyone's happy when you do shit for for them. You know, and even then sometimes you treat her like shit. So it's like, you know, fuck, mom. These aren't your friends. They're not your friends. If you would die today, they wouldn't give a fuck. I give a fuck. You know, it's, every now and then it's nice to say that out loud. Okay, so let's go and look at uh, Almond Oak. Oh, she's doing the table now, I see. This is my relaxing part of my day, watching this woman decorate her house. My goodness. She makes a nice home. Good job. Maybe she should have some children. <laughs> I don't think she's a childbearer, actually, you can just tell. Yeah, women don't have to have children. Time to get dressed. <laughs> that took way longer than I thought. Oh, that's cool. You got a bunch of things accomplished before you even had to get dressed. Crystals outside. I don't know. Crystals. I don't know. Like, is anyone out there of like crystals? I, I, I do a lot of work outside, and I keep it outside, and I love bringing nature inside. I mean, I totally understand wanting to have crystals and bring nature into your home. Like that's like, of course, right? Flowers, crystals birds, squirrels, whatever you want, but I find personally that quick to get the full value out of some things, not all, like, I think that feathers and crystals lose their power the longer they're inside, which is almost natural. Like, say, let's say you were decorating your home with all magical things you found in nature, and over time they just, eh. let's say you had a poster of a half-naked woman, after a while she's going to look at you with disdain and disapproval. Things lose their charm. <laughs> So I think like putting crystals outside, I mean, people rinse them, I know, and they do all kinds of things, but put them under the moon. I just think if you leave them outside and just let them be, they perk up. 
you know, and you just even just find a place to keep them permanently outside in your yard would be perfectly fine. Like, I, they like to be outside. They like to help people, but they like to be inside. You know, outside, they're, they're outdoorsy kind of folk. That's my feeling. I don't know if that's really an opinion I should write, but I mean, still interesting. Today I'm going for 90s craft look, and I am so excited because this is just so relaxing. This morning I caught Charlie in here, and I know he's going to just love it this autumn. And of course, like, I'm just going to keep this up forever now because, you know, why not? So I'm at that phase of decorating now where my house is an absolute tip, but I've got to trust the process because I know it's going to look amazing. I am now going to do my dining table. If I'm honest, I just need to clean it. I just need an autumn spring clean. So when I master up the strokes, we are going to continue with that. But also I want you to appreciate my new plushie. It is so cute and I love it. Ooh. <laughs> Fuck you. What the hell am I gonna do? Oh, nice feather. He's got a lot of stuff. He's a pack rat, are we? <laughs> I don't know. As long as you have a place for it, that's all that matters. Ugh. I hate clutter. Decluttering. My dad, you know, he would clean the house, we'd clean and clean and clean, and the whole place would be clean, every surface would be clean, the whole house would be clean, but what he never, never did is introduce, like, wildflowers or decorate the house and, like, restore a sense of enchantment to it. He just clean. This is this very linear male thing. Clean the house, you know? There's nothing added to it, it's just things taken away. Just didn't get a very sense of decoration or, you know. Put it this way, in all the years I grew up with my child, there was never a picture, a piece of art, or anything from school that was of mine that was posted anywhere around the house. Nothing I did or made was ever really shown around the house. So nothing of mine, nothing my own creativity, nothing was ever in the house, decorated in the house, or indicated when relatives came anything that four children lived there and produced any arts or crafts whatsoever. Amazing, eh? Nothing, nothing of our own sense of self was ever in the house. Just watch TV and go to your room. Pretty dead, actually. But I learned to fill the world with myself in a way, too. It's not all bad. I had an inner sense of self. You learn to be quite Spartan in your thinking. But that other side of life, you know, filling it with your energy and self love is very important. Beautiful. Perfect, that is. Break point. Isn't it always break point? Okay, she's showing her boobs now. <laughs> I don't like that. It's okay. That's a female thing, right? I mean, we got them. She's showing the girls a little bit, you know. It's her house. It's her video. You know, no one's complaining. You know, you could, like, put her lipstick on, like, Molly Ringwald and The Breakfast Club. <laughs> it's like, it's not like I push my boobs. Remember on Friends when Rachel, like, presses her boobs together and she's like, Please, can you do something for me? <laughs> it's like, wow. 
Not that she's doing that, but I mean, so. It's like, oh, why do you only look talking about everybody? Look at you. Oops. Ow. It's wet. Hold it. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> ah, little accident there. Um. Cramped quarters. I'm trying to get this seat perfect, but it's not working. Ah, quite. There we go. It's an art. Uh, yeah, boobs. Okay. It's not gonna look. Remember I made that joke earlier today about the woman's heart and her boobs? Well, she's showing all this purple heart energy and her boobs. Literally opening up her heart. That's what I'm going for this year. Anyway, in here, I am going to put up some wisteria, and I know oh. that wisteria is not oh. strictly, but <laughs> you can't face that it is magical. So maybe we're going to see the wisteria when. You know what else is magical? Your cleavage. Oh, she's like leaning forward now. <laughs> Sorry. No offense. Okay, here we go. Let's paint. Let's take attention away from our boobs. <laughs> oh. Ooh, purple. Okay, we don't need to see this. Okay, very good. Oh, it's raining. Buckets. Really nice. Oh, lots of crafts. Cool. Okay. west or northeast and I noticed that in the video that you know I didn't say it was in the wrong direction but I said your windows probably facing north and that you might want to get into like more celestial knowledge now she's moved her bed and she's getting into celestial knowledge it's kind of interesting. I mean they, they invite you to plug and play I'm just saying she's inviting you to talk and speculate okay it's a bedroom makeover Anyway, let's make this bit now a little bit closer. Not that I, not that I want to plug anything necessarily. So, oh. there. And oh. I've got just the thing. Hmm. A wedding dress. Oh, more white. Oh, the lights are cute. They look like mini, mini full moons. Now you're probably thinking. Isn't this the bed she just put up in the cozy nook? Well, you are right, it is. The thing is, the more I saw this white in my bedroom, the more I thought, no, it's too harsh. So, this fairy splashed out, and I wonder if before you see it, you can guess what colour the new net is going to be. Because it might not be 
what you might think. Black. But anyway, now on to something that's really stood the test of time. Something that's recently come into my possession are these beautiful old bottles that a family member has dug up because he's a builder. I'm so thankful that I have them because they are so amazing. And they are this beautiful autumn tone of amber. This was once an Oxo Pew container. I have so many of these bottles. I like, I gotta tell you, I like how positive she is. And um, it's almost like it takes evil away just listening to her. She's she's wolf's pain, I think. You know, I know that generally people say positive energy is good, but it's like, depends on, you know, what positive energy is. I like that. It's kind of clear. As, she's clearing her house. It's got a very clearing energy to it. You know? I like that. It's very natural and complete. Like, I get angry. That's how I clear energy. She changes her house. <laughs> I, just, I just get angry at her. If I had a girlfriend, I guess she would change the house and I would never get angry and then I would slowly die. So that's why I don't have a girlfriend. I don't know about you. <laughs> hmm. I thought maybe I'd do some word magic because I'm tired and lazy and that's what I do. So. That's fun. You can do, you know, like word magic. Like, I mean, she writes automatic writing or you can, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, I'm sure someone can do like. I don't necessarily get too serious about whatever I do, and sometimes it is like so. I like words, and I have a certain very critical philosophy of the English language and what I call the English, well, what I refer to in different ways, but let's say the English language universe. So, what word are we going to look at today? What's the word of the day? I think we were talking about the word east that appears so much in literature. Let's we'll say the east, and it's got the ass. Right into it, and then you've got west. Let's look at east and west. Ast, est, west, ast, east. So it's really got an ass in most of them. You got stew, and you got sate. The interesting thing about it is I'm looking in east and west for the energy of death. That's why, you know, the sun. It is, the, it is the East, and Juliet is the sun. Liet, or lit, or it, or light, the light of death. Okay? So, look at east, -er, uh, east, east to west. From east to west, because that's how the sun moves. East to west. East to west. So we have five, one, one, two, uh, I think six, five. I think W is five, um, which is interesting because if you switch the letter W and you rotate it, you get the letter E, which is also five. Okay, so five, five, S is one, which is also A, A, S. So if you had the name of God, 11, 11, it could be ass, ass, right? Ass, ass, or Ani, Ani, or Ella, Ella, five, five, one, two. And east to west could also have zero, which could also be six. So we've got two zero six in the middle. And we've got five one one two and five five one two. So five one one two, we've got eleven. So we've got two, nine, we've got nine. And then west is ten, eleven, thirteen. Right? Which together makes what? 22 or 11 11 which is 4 so 11 11 is ass ass we said ass ass right 11 11 could be ass ass and we found 22 and 11 11 east west which we theorized were ass ass and we get an ass ass at the end it's an ass 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 assignation it's the signing of ass ass. An ass assignation is the signing or the naming of a double ass system or a death. An assassination is the same as an ass assignation. Again, linking the libido of Adam and Eve to the language of the universe of God, which is death and its pecuniary damages, right? 
God gives you what you need to give him the thing you otherwise wouldn't give him that's enough for him and his perfection. And then through it, you give your life to God and you pay for the right, for the doom of being born and the pleasure of paying for the doom that came into the world when you did by learning God's language against all reality because you ruined reality when you were born. And that's what your libido has to contend with. So the human, the white libido is really a kind of proto-schizophrenia, essentially. East, West, we've got more letters to work with now. So we've got 9 and 13. What about 9 and 2? East, 2, West. Well, we get T-O, which is 2, but it's also just the number 2, because you could, the O can be 0 or 6. Or TO could be 2 and 6, which is 8. But since we have the T and 2, we're just going to take East, 6, West in a moment. So you get 28, which is 10. So if you triangulate and you add 6, you equal 28, which equals 10, which is an anal language also. It's digital. Okay, so we're... From east to west, we're drawing out these languages, right? That's if we add 6, okay? If we've done nothing, we've done 6. Now let's just add the number 2. So we get uh, 22 plus 2 is 24, which is 6, which is sex, which is yes, which is also 9, which is no. Sex, yes, no. We've got an anal digital language. We've got 1111 for all crime and ass ass, an ass assignation, the signing of the double ass or one's ass sets, right? The ass sets. It's all in the language of the sun. Now we've taken those two. We can add another two to that and we can get eight, which is E I T, which is basically death. I eat is just another code word for light or death. which is a homophone for eat. In the Western world, everything eats itself. Everything eats everything else. Uh, if we take 2 and 6 and we add 8 to 22, we get 30. which is 3, which is the number of the sun. And that's the most, that's the most we can add east to west, is to the number of the sun at its top. Everything else is actually a corruption. That's the most it can add to, and the least it can add to is 22, which is an 1111, which is the number 4. You take 4, 3, you get 7, 7, 11. So it all comes back around. East to west, east to west. The language of death over something that could not normally be killed. The energy of the sun, the energy of the spirit. And we see that we have three fives in it, three ones, and two twos. Got to go for a second, bring back. Yeah, my, uh, my mom and I were terrorized through COVID. I was terrorized through COVID. White people are terrified. And they're cowards. You know, we've been gang-stalked by people in the building. They don't think we can tell, you know. They've been gang-stalking us for years. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they never meet you anywhere. Like, you, you, you deal with one white person, and you're dealing with a river of white people. Uh, like one snake leads to a river of snakes. One white snake is a river of snakes. They're all, and every one of them is a fucking coward. You want to really piss them off? Do nothing. Do nothing. Because there's always, they always got patsies and people around them and narratives and fictions. Everything they're using to hurt you is everything they're going to use to fucking hurt you more. If you say anything, they're just fucking cowards. They'll just pollute every fucking well as much as they can. 
to the point where you tell them to go fuck themselves, right? But other, white people are utter fucking cowards. Utter fucking cowards. They never do anything. They're also fucking independent, but they never are hostile to anyone except that they fucking get to a long line of fucking white snakes every fucking time. Okay, lining up. Before I found out, I was spreading beef onto my mm. toast, which mm. is a bit weird. <laughs> this is so... No, never mind. It's in the hand. Down, 50 to go. <laughs> no one ever told me when I was a child that, you know, you hear about bad people, the bad people. And I learned walking around and seeing white people under different circumstances more difficult, but also more sensitive, that white people are the bad people. You know, white people are really the bad people. I mean, they're they're like a river of snakes every fucking day, every time you see them. Like, I said to my mom as a kind of boy when he introduced himself to my dad, I said, you know, anyone who needs to make that kind of facial contact and, like, make you like them and prove that they're really nice and that they respect you that much while you're putting your garbage out um, is a garbage person. You know, it's old people don't realize, like, they've spent their lives being psychopaths, right? And it, it, you get at the quintessence of disingenuous behavior. So we've got east to west, and we've got the three popping out now. we got two sets of threes, and then two twos. 
which is itself 6 and 4, which is also 10. So there's that. Interesting. Uh, what else? Um, so yeah, one snake white person is a river snake, so they never really operate by themselves. That's that's the key to avoiding them. Never, never get angry with them because they represent a long line of snakes. Yeah, white people are the bad people. They're the thing that, that bring the most suffering into the world, right? It's like my mom, the reason you're not feeling well today is because you're around white people yesterday. Think about it. She didn't sleep well. She's not feeling well today. Then she spent a couple hours around white people, right? She went and bought some flowers for some white people you know, that she doesn't normally go. And it's like, white people are sick. You know? My mom doesn't necessarily have as much resistance to them, right? They're like half dead. I don't have any white friends. Any white friends. Um, the Bible, I said, is a play on words with the word torture. You've got east to west. What else? Uh, we could do the word marriage. I talk about that a lot. Stuff to do with marriage. We can just look at that. Okay, so we got M. Four, the letter four. Remember, W is five, E is five, M is four. That's what I'm saying. One, R is nine. Oops. And it's running out. My pen is running out. Shit. One, one, seven, five. Four, one, nine, nine, one, one, seven, five. Four one nine nine one one seven five. So three ones, two nines, which makes nine. So four five nine fourteen five five nine fourteen five six seven 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 is fourteen five five and five is ten. So hearing a lot of numbers repeating, like the number five, is in there quite a bit. Four one five five nine five five nine five plus five ten, which is uh, the two, which is twelve. Seven is nineteen, which is ten, which is one. Right? And what are is marriage? What did God say today? Is that the couple is supposed to become one, and that divorce should be punished the same as adultery, right? which is death. The only reason God allows it, divorce, is because you have such a hard heart. Right? So, two become one, and ten is one, but it is always the, but it's also the language of death, or the number two. So, in the becoming one of marriage, right, is the language of divorce. The forest of death, if you will, which is a play on words with the number four. If we look at the word forest, you've almost got the number for east, so you got five, one, two, oops. Then you got uh, A, B, C, D, F, G, eight, seven, six, or zero, Nine seven six nine five one two seven six thirteen four four nine thirteen four. So we've got two fours in there. Uh, four five and nine nine and three is twelve, which is three. You take away six, you get seven nine sixteen seven seven five is twelve is three 
3 and 3 is 6. Both numbers for yes, one of which is the number for sex. The letter X is actually the number 6, which is 2, 3. So the Paul of the sun becomes 6, 2 of the 3 becomes sex, or the human libido. And 6 and 3 is 9, which is no, which is also yes and sex. So you get a digital language in the forest, in the play on words or foreplay of the number 4. Well, my pen is running out, so I've had enough of that. Oh, that's nice. Right, the steer is going to hang with this up here. I'm not enjoying this anymore. Stuff to put on. Because they literally... So, like I was saying, I decided that the silhouette of this unit would look better in the open of the lounge. And if there is something I feel this corner looks now, it's haunted, oh. which I love, and my forest seance dreams were here. <laughs> this corner of the lounge is wedding central, and it needed to be disguised. So, of course, a throw, and these mossy pictures, which will be a surprise for a later date. And the trees, darling. They will frame this room. And of course, nothing's cozy without a beanbag. Nice, cozy beanbag. Oh, my back. Oh, my back. A nice, cozy bag. I just hope I don't hear those little beans at night time when I'm trying to sleep. No ghosties allowed, please. <laughs> I like a cat. That one. Nah. Bish, 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 bish. Everyone say hi to Mabel. She's come out of hibernation, haven't you, darling girl? Oh, she likes her pillows. Oh, the bathroom. So exciting. This is getting a little girly for me. Hopefully it's not. But let's see what it looks like anyway, so... <laughs> oh, it's purple. I've got 
got a self-care box that I use in the evening. And it has all my little bits and bobs that I use in the evening, like my Oracle deck, my lavender mist spray, my night oil, and my little uh, face mask and lavender. And um, I put it in a little pumpkin. I love this. Okay. It's very unlike me, but I'm so excited because I looked up, not sure, although it is good then. I like it when she goes outside. Powerful time. And there was nothing like making over a home, but also making over yourself and your mood in the process. Now I have a place for all my moods, a witchy bedroom, cozy kitchen, haunted lounge and dining room, ethereal cozy nook, and not to mention the hand soap dispenser in the bathroom. Yes. Well, for someone who has a lot of stuff, she does pretty well by it. They had these um, psychopathic white people staying in my house, as most white people are psychopaths. And they stayed for three days, they squatted in my house, they barely gave me any notice they were coming. And it was really nice because as they were leaving, after violating all of my altars and all of my personal material, and you know, um, sexually assaulted me, one of their friends came over and sexually assaulted me. Um, and, you know, after we went to visit them and, and, you know, an alcoholic old man. And, and then when they were leaving and they left a used condom and they said to me that it was okay while standing at my house before I drove them a half hour for free to the ferry, that it was okay, a little bit of room if I wanted to. The moon had told them, you see, that there was a little bit of space left for me to be myself if I wanted to. And that I wasn't being enough of myself, Right giving me no room, and no one could really have any room around them to really barely breathe for three days. And then suddenly, basically saying, oh, you know, you should, you can take a little bit for yourself. You can be yourself. And the thing is, it's not just that they're particularly crazy. It's that it is so typical of white people. I've gotten really good at noticing narcissism. It's their entire way of life. I uh, I house sat this woman's house and worked at this market and did soap. And they went to Fiji for like two weeks. Didn't change anything, cleaned the entire house, made sure like even if I slept in the blood, like, it didn't, I was scared of changing anything, doing anything. And when they got back, she accused me of stealing things from her. I could tell, like, she was being territorial. I don't think she could really stand the idea of someone living in her house for two weeks. Even though she paid me, it was like she completely ran my name down around the island. And she wouldn't even make eye contact with me ever again. It was amazing. I think she said to me, and it was, I got into this car with this weird white woman. 
And again, I lived in a place with white people. Crazy. I was getting a ride back to my house in Vesuvius. And I said, you know, I said one thing about myself. I said, oh, I, I house sit down at this house. And she said, why don't we go there? Shh. You know? And she, like, pulled up and said, you know, why don't you knock on the door and say hello? I said, okay, you can let me off here, I guess. I'll say hello. And, I was like, and this woman opens the door and she says, did you take one of my albums? Did you borrow? I said, no, I, I barely even listen to your music, you know? And, uh... It was like, right? Never made eye contact with me again. Then I knew another white female, the one that was serially raping me and admitted to raping me in public in front of a couple of nice Jews that I knew, right? She didn't give a shit. She didn't give a shit. She never gave a shit. I'd help her at the market every market every week. She afterwards she'd be like, "Oh, I'm so tired." She'd never ask me if I was tired, right? White people don't ask you if you're tired. They don't give a fuck. They just give a fuck about themselves. They're all narcissists. They're all narcissists. They have to be. The whole white race is conditioned as an animal to function as a personality as though there's not enough air for everyone. It's like living on the surface of Mars already. Right? It's like it's like they're already on Mars. Everything is a war and there's not enough oxygen for everyone. It's insane. I'm feeling a little bit off this evening just because I know my mom and I are dealing with white fatigue. It's kind of like a whiteout. Just a little fatigued from sexual assault, but uh, I'll have a good sleep and we'll go on tomorrow. We just keep going. It really takes you down a peg, even though it was a little bit better than usual. How is there even such a thing as a better sexual assault? Well, that's life around white people. Nobody tells you ever that they're the bad people. They're the bad people on the earth. And people deal with them because they have to. White people are extremely disingenuous. They're horribly out of balance, and they have no sense of personal space. I think some of these people are lesbians. See, in England, this is six hours ago, that's like, in England, that's like, you know, seven or eight at night, right? People like the purple. <sighs> John. John, John, John. Okay, well, let's go back to YouTube and see if there's anything interesting. Although, I actually think that YouTube is what partly what gives me nightmares at night, so maybe I'll put that down. I don't like YouTube at night. I don't sleep as well. Let's do some runes. A 
I find the, the runes are kind of like make a sentence. You can just let each one of them hit your subconscious and it's telling you something. It could be your history, it could be your present. Right? All's well that ends well. Just keep letting your subconscious read it. Don't even think that you can't read it. Basically, it can go on forever. And then, bum, 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 bum. So I'm getting Ansu's is getting upright. A god, Odin, universe, messenger of the gods, knowledge, wisdom, communication, the mouth, a message. Ansu's is primarily Odin's room and represents communication, creativity, controlled, and divine power. Spiritually, it is the rune of prophecy and revelation. It also encompasses the ideas of wisdom, knowledge, reason, and therefore of instruction and good advice. It might also refer to a test, examination, or perhaps an interview. It can mean a letter, book, paper, message, or other information. Because Loki was a renowned trickster, Ansu's reverse may also pretend to surprise, trick, or subterfuge. The answers to questions are available, but not yet recognized. Look for signs and confirmations which are all around. Everything has significance. Um, this prostitute that used to live here, she's been influencing a lot of people in the building for several years because I told her to fuck off. I basically said, you fat, ugly, alcoholic bitch. Stay away from my fucking mom. She was sucking the life out of her. She was getting her drunk. She managed to extort $20,000 off of her during COVID. Very well planned, very well strategized encouraging my mom to get some money and do this and suddenly my mom's like oh she's telling me this next thing you know she's like do you want to rent my apartment next thing she rents the apartment once my mom runs starts to run out of money she starts invading my mom's personal space with real estate agents not just any but literally invading her space and then freaking her out and then saying you can come and live you know and financially dependent to me she used to be a madam Basically, what she does is she defrauds people. I said the first time she met my, I said, Mom, she's a fraudster. She's a con artist. Watch out for her. She basically spends her life defrauding people like my mom, her husband, her children. She lives off of people like a parasite. She's a complete social parasite. Unfortunately, so are a lot of the white people I live around. And they have sent me some very sick messages over the years. And then there's nothing. So they don't get anything out of it. They don't get anything out of you. And that's it. They just freak you out. That's it. They just freak you out. And then you just do nothing. You do absolutely nothing. And sometimes it just freaks me out more than others. Like physically, I've been okay. Today, we're a little bit off. You know, I got sexually harassed by some of them or assaulted a couple of days ago. And, you know, you can get a wobble two or three days later. Then you go on. But it was, I've got a lot of experience. It's not always a good thing dealing with white people. They are mostly narcissistic well we'll take a look a bit why i think that I'll, I'll i'll read from his book here why are white people all psychopaths good question okay let's take a look at what white people say although overachievement well, this, this applies to my mom. Another way people act out is by being useful to everyone. The only way she got approval from her depressed mother was to do things for her to make herself useful. It carried on into adulthood. She knew that if she was useful, she was wanted. When she was invited to a friend's home for dinner, it was she who became the hostess, clearing the table, washing the dishes, and so forth. I went to this wake. These white people had killed this Tibetan Buddhist. He basically sucked the life out of him. He married the wrong woman. He married a libidinous psychopath. They're nice libidinous psychopaths. They sucked the life out of him with fruit juice. They put him on an all fucking juice diet. You know who was putting him on a juice diet? Well, he met them at the wake. Two giant rich white people who weighed 400 fucking pounds. If they weighed a pound. And of all the people there, they picked me to continue running this industrial strength juicer that that talk that talked over all of the voices in the room, and the only time anyone thought anything was wrong with it is as soon as they started making me run it just for a few minutes, and then I walked away, right? 
And it's like, it's amazing how they knew who to pick, who would be useful, who they could fucking dupe into running this thing. Because they basically killed the guy, right? They're showing up to the scene of a crime, showing you how they killed someone, and I'm losing from it. There was a man taken out from this building whose wife basically sucked the life out of him. And within an hour, a white woman, among others connected with this prostitute, sexually assaulted me in that same thing. Later, the, the fucking manager told me he looked over the video and wanted to tell us about how cool it was that he saw this woman who lives in the penthouse, her husband's body taken away. Why even tell us that? Why even breach? And then he starts telling us that this woman is just a nitwit and the strata not to hear anything that she said, basically sexually assaulting her because his wife and other women in the building have basically been stalking me on behalf of this other prostitute, by the way, who no one ever bothered with after 10 years of running solicitation out of her apartment. Not a fucking word, right? That's white people. Then the, the woman whose husband passed away lies to my mom about when the wake is, so she shows up at the wrong time. They don't even fucking apologize. My mom is like a delicate person. I tell her, you might not want to go back. I don't feel like this is a good thing. She goes back, and within half an hour, she has a panic attack. That morning, some other fat white bitch living upstairs, who's her fucking fake friend, dumped all of her emotional problems onto my mom because she's a useful, agreeable person. And she had a panic attack, and she had to call a hospital. Do you know who fucking found her in the elevator? The same fucking fat woman who unloaded her entire fucking life. Isn't it? What an amazing world. On the day when I said this is the most likely day that you're going to have a biological episode, given what I've been feeling. So I'm sexually assaulted the day the guy fucking dies, and then my mom is taken to the hospital the day they finally get around to having a wake for him. Two fucking the same people in the building who are the least connected to these fucking people. Right? And one of the women who started harassing me when I lived in here. It's fucking amazing, isn't it? And the fucking manager is lying his fucking ass off. So all he wants to do once this woman attacks me is make sure that I don't think it has anything to do with his wife. So he fucking lies to his face and scapegoats the woman, right? You see what a fucking world they live in. Who wants to be a part of that? You can't even tell them to go fuck themselves. Then later on, he steals a piece of my mail I leave on the floor. I come back. The guy doesn't even make eye contact me. He actually stalks my mom for three days to make sure she knows how sorry he is about this woman attacking me. Why is he sorry? It's not like he did anything. Why is he sorry? He doesn't realize what he's saying. Why is he sorry? Why is he apologizing on behalf of all of the people in the building? What do they have to do with it? You see what I mean? Next thing you know, a piece of mail disappears. This guy stalks my mom in public to repeat how sorry he is. And then suddenly then I see him a week later and he doesn't even make eye contact with me and doesn't say sorry. It's like, it's absolutely bizarre. But this woman planned to suck the life. She didn't realize, you see, she was getting information about my mom, about how much money she had, where she was getting it from. And I made sure she didn't know how much money I had. That's the one information I kept from her and I kept from my mom. Right? And so when she started getting into her apartment and started paying, she knew exactly what to charge her. She wasn't going to charge her any less because I knew two months earlier that she was planning on something. I saw her come to the building and stare at me. She wanted to give me some free THC. I knew she was planning something. I saw her coming a mile away. She's a psychopath. Next thing you know, she has my mom in her apartment. She's charging all kinds of money and she's having people come in without her permission and lead her into tacitly condoning this behavior. Okay, and when I step in, one of the real estate agents sexually assaulting my mom, she calls my mom and says, your son isn't allowed to be in the apartment, which is great because it gives my mom a moment to say something, which is, you can't tell me that, you know, then she threatened to call the police on me. This is a prostitute. This is how narcissists behave. She threatened to call the, right, call the police on me, told her to fuck off. Right? You fat, ugly, fucking alcoholic. Leave my mom alone and never fucking contact her again. And thankfully, she hasn't. The only thing she contacted is to tell her that her dog, who she didn't fucking care about, fucking died. Chances are, whatever guy she was banging at the time was gone too. She lost her fucking real estate friend 
And people like that, they always want to get their pound of flesh because they don't plan, they don't lose anything. And so after that, over the years, I started to get slandered and stalked by other women in the building who I know from firsthand keep in contact with her. Okay. She knew exactly how much money my head she had. She knew how much to charge, but she, she thought I was a fucking nothing. And I was able to help support my mom, who was going through a period of coming out of alcoholism and was becoming quite non-forthcoming to me. And I was able to help her with the money so she didn't have to take... This woman waited and waited until my mom was almost out of money and said, you can come and stay at my penthouse in Victoria, separating me from my mother, from her family, and go look for a place to live. How do you think she... What do you think, after using my mom in every possible way, what do you think was going to happen to my mother? She was already planned all of this. All of it. She doesn't get... White people don't give a fuck about human life. The manager didn't care. Nobody gives a fuck. These people are such fucking low lives. It makes me want to go for a walk. Anyway, although overachievement isn't always an example, and so I've been paying for it ever since. But my mom is safe. We've been sickened, we've been stalked, but it's almost over. It's taken three, four years. That's how much hatred this woman has for me. That's how much hatred. And you see these low-level fucking cowardly fucking cunt white people. These fat, ugly fucks who live in disease every fucking day of their lives. And they have nothing. Right? They're fucking dying. They have no mental existence at all. Nothing. You look at the fucking books down there. They're not fucking reading anything. The one fucking day I went to that fucking bookshelf downstairs to actually take a look, one of the main fucking fat women came in and started just fucking staring at me. Then she started, when they moved in, she started stalking us. She still stalks us. She stares at us in public, right? These people aren't my mother's friends. They aren't her friends. These are sick, sick people. Thankfully, it's kind of coming down. But you, you know, you, you look at what this woman was willing to do to my mother and the facade that she puts on to other people. What she didn't know is that my mom had an ace up her sleeve, me. I made sure she never knew anything about me. She kept, she'd come. She thought I was a fucking schizo retard. She thought I didn't have any fucking personal power whatsoever. And I waited and I waited. I was patient. I was patient. I'm not looking to have conflict with people. I thought it's my mom's life. And eventually I just said, that's enough. I told the real estate company, you give my mom 24, hour, 24 hours and you do not come into her home without her fucking permission. Do you fucking understand me? And you know, it sold online overnight six hours later. The next day, my mom's, I don't know what you did, but the place just sold. Amazing, hey? They were probably waiting to get a buyer in real life because they make more of a commission. It pays out more. It was a nice 600,000 two bedroom. They were going to get something. They couldn't wait any longer because they couldn't access the apartment safely anymore, you see? So everyone lost money. But you know what happened? We got two really nice brown people down the hall. No more prostitute. But I pay, I pay, I pay. This whole place is safer for it. This whole place is safer for it. You know? People have a hard time staying here because people do get attacked. I'm not the only one. People get harassed by these elderly fucking psychopaths. They literally, like white people, oh, you know, you're allowed to have all kinds of excessive sense of psychological space and propriety. We all do. I'm sure our sense of personal whatever comes in and out of, of reason all the time. But this is this is a little too much. Oh, but it's almost over. You know, she needed to get her pound of flesh. You can just feel it sometimes. And other they're able to charge other unhealthy people with hatred to people they barely even know, playing on their lack of attention, lack of love. You know, every white person has fucking life problems. They're easy for sociopaths to mislead and form menage a sort of dues with them, you know? They like a shared pain, a shared delusion, right? A shared delusion with other hurt women. But they benefit from the chaos. They create the chaos because they live in chaos. White people, white sociopaths live in chaos. They create chaos. So what you do is you don't add any energy to the chaos. Right? You don't I don't have to add any more, right? Imagine what that person was willing to do to my mom that's willing to get people to stalk and sexually harass her son for four years. Right? Who she knows lives on a disability, right, for depression. It's amazing. They have no fucking love. But she's out of my mother's life. It takes a while. You pay for it because my mom decided to fucking know this person. She almost lost her fucking life for it. It wasn't the first time. 
She gave my mom alcohol poisoning one night. My mom was in her 70s. She has no fucking shame. White psychopaths have no fucking shame. You can't go up against something like that. They don't give a fuck. They're like insects. They can breathe underwater. Whereas when you try to come out of a life of, of uh, abuse from a white person, it's it's like you, you have to learn to breathe underwater. Learning to have emotions is like breathing underwater. You start to like... Your shock is a way for your emotional body to come and to grow back, you know? So, although overachievement, this is all about white people, by the way. This book is all based on him studying white people. So, making yourself usual. So, it was she who became the hostess, clearing the table, washing the dishes, and so forth. The real feeling was that she was useless and therefore not worthy of love. The act out kept the, the, act out kept the real feeling away. Although overachievement isn't always an example of acting out, consider an individual who has always energetically pursued and obtained what he has wanted, a good job, a lot of money, a family, a nice house, leisure time. Suddenly he feels let down, depressed, hopelessness sets in. Having achieved everything, what else is there to get? There is nothing more to struggle for, but the underlying need to get remains. What he has gotten in the present is not exactly what he needed as a child, so he feels disappointed, and that disappointment may not be conscious. The person simply sets his sights on other lofty goals. More money, more success, bigger deals, more freedom. This keeps the struggle alive. The struggle. We talked about white people being in a panic but they don't have the emotions, it's not conscious. On the verge of making things go right, a person does something to make it go wrong. This is sometimes known as self-destructive behavior. It may have begun at birth, when things suddenly went terribly wrong. A tumor blocked the way out, or there was a delay because the doctor did not arrive on time. In adult life, one white woman, she was a psychopath, told me that her obstetrician induced her labor without telling her because he was going on vacation. It's funny that she never did anything to the doctor. She didn't stop the doctor or say anything wrong to the doctor. And yet this might have produced all kinds of trauma, right? But I, when I reported her, and I won't go into detail, to social services just to get a check for her and her child. She's a psychopath. She was doing cocaine, all kinds of stuff. She ended up stalking me for 10 years, right? Because it's not just people hurting them in their world. It's that only certain people are allowed to hurt them. There was a local chiropractor sexually assaulting her. But she didn't care. There was a local man having an adulterous affair and using her for sex. She didn't care, right? What, when, what suddenly makes them angry is when they have someone they can get away with being violent to. Their victimization is very strategic about who they take it out on, you see. They take it on the people they can, not the people who necessarily deserve it. That's white people. On the verge of making things go right, a person does something to make it go wrong. This is sometimes known as self-destructive behavior. In adult life, the person recreates the early trauma in exactly the same way, allowing things to go fine for a while and then doing something to ruin everything. It enables the person to avoid the depression and hopelessness and reaffirms the realization that things going fine now will not resolve what went wrong back then. People create chaos, they create problems. This type of behavior is often acted out in relationships. We all know people who get married for many reasons, but two years down the road, they discover who their partner really is and they don't like him or her. Again, this is a very white thing that happens. They put so many of their hopes onto the other person that they never saw him or her for who they were. They were acting out. Who suffers most? The children they have. By the way, God talks about divorce and doesn't even mention children. He just says it's another reason for me to kill you, which in God's language means that's a reason for me to charge you money for your divorce. You see? Taxation and death are the same thing in God's world. He taxes you as a, an alternative to giving you a death sentence. The death sentence and the life sentence are something that all white people are dealing with. But he says the children who are victims of their neurosis, people without deep pain know with whom they are getting involved. If they have no overarching past to project onto the present, they stand a better chance at a decent and enduring marriage and successful parenting. 
right? It's no news to anyone that most problems in relationships come from unfulfilled needs. So, I'll give you an idea of the white world. Now, I think I'm probably just going to go for a quick little walk before I uh, go to sleep tonight. So, that's it for me. Thank you.